what's up, Internet Land? Uh, my name is Dump Truck, and I'm known for talking too much about motorcycles. And so today I'm here on Cycle Source Television, and got my buddy Chris Callen on the line, and they partnered up with Dennis Kirk for a motorcycle giveaway. Chris, how you doing, bud? Hey, what's up, Dump Truck? How you doing? Man, I'm so good. Right on. <laughs> Winter time. Hey, I, I got that... a question for you to get things going off real fast. Okay. So, like, this is a this is the first time that uh, Dennis Kirk and Cycle Surf Magazine have teamed up for the garage build. That's also a giveaway. Um, so, like, what was the idea that came up? Why why did you choose to do this program? Well, you know, f from the beginning, Cycle Source Magazine comes from the whole garage build end of things you know the little two car garages across the country it's where we started with the magazine it's where a, a large majority of our readers are still from today and when we saw the garage build program and got to know the story behind it Bob Behan who's the president of that company of Dennis Kirk actually has his own garage build program going on at home so every winter Bob goes into his lab and comes out with something cool that he builds every year and that's really the the starting point of garage build was Bob celebrating what he does in his garage and how Dennis Kirk as a company facilitates that for other people so it was a it was a no-brainer for us to get involved you know helping them out with bike shows here and there like we started doing video interviews with some of the garage builders and talking about what the guys have at home what their garages are like what they want to build next it, it showed us that you know we really wanted to celebrate the culture and the community that was behind all of this and and what a great way other than to build a bike while everybody's building a bike in the end give it away to one of those guys yeah i think that's awesome so i mean the next question is, maybe not everybody knows why the fx r motorcycle is such a big deal um why did you decide to go with this platform for the garage build? Well, you know, especially today, you know, Bob is the first person to say FXR has clout. You know, when you go back into custom building into the 80s even, if you busted out an FXR, you know, it, it carries its own clout with it. But especially in a time like today where we're moving into the performance industry so hard and there's so much going on with the Dynas and FXRs and performance baggers, this is still like those those early FXRs are kind of king in that arena, you know. So we had an opportunity through a good buddy of ours to get a get a nice um, offer on a an, an early FXR and grabbed it up so that we could go from the traditional standpoint of ground up, clean everything up, take away the years of abuse, and and put it on the street again. So are you gonna, is this build gonna end up being one of those hopped up, super flashy, like wild top of the line parts all over it? Or is this gonna be something more tangible? I think definitely more tangible, both on the side of Cycle Source and for Dennis Kirk and, and the whole garage build program. I mean, obviously, you know, like starting off, we got the alloy art swing arm, which is incredible. The, the worn amount shocks, like, there's going to be some parts on here that are that are top shelf. The Arlen SY spoke wheels that are coming for it are absolutely fantastic. But at the same time, we sort of wanted to take this back to where everybody could do this. You know, so we don't want to use parts that are so much like the whole bike ends up being fifty or sixty thousand dollars, and it's something that the average people can't afford to do. Because I would love to see someone build these this exact same motorcycle. You know, so we want to use some stuff that's out of the Dennis Kirk catalog that's obtainable, you know, that's that's got a good price point. And we even want to do some stuff like this tank here was a, a tank that I got at a swap meet once upon a time. It's not necessarily made for FXR, but we're going to put some mounts on it like we do in garages all across the country. And we're going to make it work for this build. I think that's one of the messages that uh, that's not necessarily missing, but but needs to always be regular in the motorcycle community, whether you're on sport bikes or choppers or whatever is in between, is is the fact that it doesn't matter that this part wasn't made for this bike. If it's what you want, then you sit down, you look at it, you figure out how to make it work, and you make it yours. And and uh, it's a, I guess you could say I'm about to knock my computer off the desk. Um, 
I guess you could say it's a, it's more of a kind of a chopper mentality. I just like it, so I'm going to make it work. And I think that's something that's really cool. I've done that quite a bit of my motorcycles. And to kind of, you'll be able to expand some people's minds, I think, when you show how simple it is just to do simply what you want, regardless if this was made for that or not. Well, and that, that does my heart good, too, because no one's more excited probably than me that this whole new culture is emerging. You know, the, the performance thing is really reinvigorated everything in motorcycling and i'm stoked about it you know brl and king of the baggers and all the performance shows that are going on at the big rallies it's fantastic but at the same time i look at some of that being a blue collar guy myself i look at some of the cost of those parts and maybe you could get as a blue collar guy you could save up to get one or two of them but you're not going to get all that stuff on the same motorcycle not the re not the regular working guy that's raising a family and you know has the whole thing going on so it's possible to make a cool bike if you put some sweat equity into it you know and you'll have a couple of the trick parts and maybe it's not going to be the the big list of everything that's out there like you know the next guy's going to have but this is your motorcycle you know i mean you do you yeah it's not about the joneses you know right. it's about what you want not about what homie next door has you know like and I'm sure what they have is great for them. Yeah. So it's like that individuality and like you, you can find, you, we could both have FXRs and they could be completely different, you know? And that's part of the point, like expressing yourself through this iron and now the performance kick. I mean, everything on the hooligan level in racing has come up big time in the last five to 10 years. And now you've got the street and performance cool. movements and it's not just drag racing anymore, you know? Yep. It's, and like you were saying, it's really like putting adrenaline shot into our industry and it's added a whole, I mean, it's brought back of like the original version of a good time in motorcycling, and it's also evolved into more versions of it. It's really, really interesting. All right, so you were talking about like the big list of stuff and things. Let's talk about your big list for this garage build. What play, what do you already have uh, on the bike currently? You talked about the alloy arc swing arm, and I believe you said RWD suspension on the rear. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do you have going on the bike right now? Well, in the motor, I have to thank my boy Jason down at Cycle Stop in, in Lakeland, Florida. Jason took over everything on the motor for us. So we stripped the motor down, cleaned everything up. What needed replaced got replaced, freshened the top end up, went into the transmission, cleaned that up, uh, vapor honed all the cases, and then took all of our stock covers and took them out to a powder coater so that we're going just like a lot of the guys are doing today. We have a color theme, you know, and our color theme obviously is red, silver, black, and gold, you know, and that's going to work in with the, the Dennis Kirk colors and the garage build colors into the theme of this bike. But um, it's a it's a cheaper way to do that, you know, like I'm, I'm not going with a lot of the super high-end billet um, anodized stuff. I, I would like to, but at the same time, I want to keep this thing grounded, you know, so we're doing a, we're doing a couple right. of those things. Like we're putting money into the alloy art um, pivot block stuff on the swing arm and, and the motor mounts and stuff. So those are going to be key features that kind of stand out. But, you know, stock sheet metal in the back, man, just a stock FXR fender. We got the benefit of an Arlen Ness front fender which by the time we put that Y spoke wheel in the front of here, cause it's a, a three and a half rim, it'll be a nice fat tire up here and fill this fender right. up real nice. You know, um, LA fairing company got their Diablo fairing up here coupled with a, a Harley inverted front end. And I, we keep wrestling over this. I think it's a Nightster or a night train front end, but you know, originally you and I had talked about this. A lot of guys do the either GSXR or you know the the Hayabusa front end on these and we were starting to do that with this but I thought about the the nature of this program and even though you can get those front ends complete with Tokiko brakes for 600 to a thousand dollars right on on marketplace and eBay right, and stuff ready to go. I got this front end for four hundred dollars on marketplace and it's Harley so I don't have to that's, machine my own stem awesome. or anything right yeah, and it's cool because, like, you can have that, you know, more, I guess you could say more modern of suspension technology up front and still have the brand going all the way through. Like, I, I've got, you know, Tokiko brakes on my Road King, you know. I, I think I just lost nine friends when I said that. But it's you know, it's it's one of those things where if, if you have it available to keep it in the same family, I would most likely have done the same thing. I've been like, well, if I can get this for X number of dollars instead of that, 
and it still stays true to the brand, then yeah, that, that's just a win. How, how long did you look for that front end? That sounds like something that you can't come across too much. You know, I actually went through two GSXR front ends first, and one of them's hanging on the wall here. But wow. um, the first one had a bent leg, and that was like, you got to be careful when you're buying that stuff. Like, sometimes you lose on it. But uh, the second one was good, and I had it up here, and Heather was scrolling through Facebook Marketplace, and she came up with this front end, and I was like, you know what? I have another FXR project coming up. I can keep that GSXR front end for. This was just too perfect, you know? Well, that's awesome. I love how that works out. Do you, uh, do you have any other, like, kind of special ideas that you know aren't going to be easy to find necessarily from a catalog do you have any hunting you expect to do um not too much i mean you know everybody has the complications today with the supply chain you know so the only thing i'll tell people that are sure. out there building right now is look early don't wait to the last minute to get your stuff um you know st stupid stuff like well nuts inside of these covers the way this whole compartment is put together is with like two dozen well nuts you know you can get those at the local hardware store once you figure out what they are and and go and get them but to try to find them through the aftermarket companies because of the supply chain thing you you may not be able to get them um here's something i do want to talk yeah, about you know that that's actually i'm sorry before you move on from that that's a really important note for for people that are out there purchasing and building your own stuff and doing your thing Remember that whenever you're purchasing most of these products, that there's a small business involved. That small business Amen. is responsible to a supply chain, regardless of the reason that it's slower than normal. The fact is, it's slower than normal. So yeah. be kind to the people that are helping you build your dreams and communicate as much as you want. Have some manners and be grateful that you have the choice to buy parts and build a motorcycle with. Like and not you know, everybody can just make that choice and go online and click. So it's real easy today with social media and to, to pretend that's not a real person on the other end, you know, and, and they are. Uh, and it absolutely, I've been on the other end, you know, we've all been on the other end. And it's like, you know, you can only do so much until the stuff just shows up. So, you know, everyone wants you to build your dream. Just don't make it a nightmare in the process. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to turn my furnace in the in the garage off. It's cold here. <laughs> uh, so, it's not here. I'm in New Orleans. It wants to be cold, but it doesn't really know how. This is this is one of the things that'll drive you nuts. In the performance thing today, everybody wants to use these super high-end 12-point fasteners. And if I was yeah. given an unlimited budget. I would too. They're cool. They work better than regular fasteners. They're badass. But there's nothing saying that you have to do this. You know, one of the things that we try to do, no matter what fasteners you're going to use, try to keep a theme the whole way through it. That's part of what keeps the motorcycle looking clean and correct. If you have, you know, socket heads here and a square head up here and, and pan heads down here, like that, everything starts to get chaotic. But... I think that's one of the reasons people like those 12 points so much is because they usually end up replacing all existing hardware with it. Yeah. And if you did that with any kind of hardware head, you'd get the same kind of clean look just with a different fastener. I mean, I, I also love those 12 points, but I mean, you have to have a whole other budget just to do that to your whole motorcycle. And it's, you know, it's not well, necessary. Well, and it depends it too. Uh, like here's you work better, but you can do it with other stuff. Here's what I think the, the proposition is really I can't get this 12 point stainless hardware at Ace Hardware down the street from me. And for a garage guy, I don't need, you know, a whole bin of all the different sizes. I need four, five sixteenths, two, three eighths, you know what I mean? So I make those right. trips back and forth to the hardware store and I end up spending as much money because a chrome socket head at Ace Hardware I think is just as much as like a, as ARP hardware you know but doing it one piece at a time like a garage guy does it's a better alternative <coughs> yeah for sure Ooh, don't die you know. yeah right that's a <laughs> pittsburgh winter so this is this is one of my things you know i set out way early on saying 
I was going to do as much as I could from the catalog and try to keep it simple and not get over over loaded with you know high end handmade stuff. But other than every once in a while, the chopper guys side covers will come available, and then somebody grabs them up. Uh, Steve Chamberlain makes a nice set of these, but other than that, the aftermarket doesn't have a really nice set of side covers for FXR. So we uh, we set out our right original plan was to hand make a set of these and take everybody through the process of making them so if you have a limited amount of tools it's not super hard <clears throat> i thought it was worth taking people through the steps <clears throat> the cool thing is i learned something new doing this this is a thing called eva foam i learned about this from my daughter who does cosplay and this foam Oh, cool. Helped us make a three-dimensional model of the inset where those covers go. So after the model, I had a, a more perfect paper, paper template. And then I was able to take my flat piece and see how that dimension was needed to go. You know, so I could work my shrinker stretcher and I could right. get the right lines right off of the bat. So... That is really, did you think um, five years ago, just five years ago, that you'd be using a phone to do something like that? Dude, listen, I tease my daughter so much about so cause, cosplay. So, like, I can just imagine, for the rest of my life, she's going to be giving me the business now because cosplay taught me something for choppers, you know? Cosplay saved the FXR. That's just what happened here today, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Chris. <laughs> Chris, I'm going to jump in here real quick couple comments for you dan duggan from um ireland says it looks great he really likes the lines on it really? uh, kevin baxter said it's looking good he uses the 12 points all the time not cheap but they look great and tim kearns um wants to know if you have a seat and handlebars in mind yet uh well the handlebars are already on it i have some vortex clip-ons lucky enough to find 50 millimeter or excuse me these were 52 millimeter um, so what we're going to do, we have some performance ah. machine contour cut controls coming for this. And we're going to trim these up as short as we can to keep it nice and tight. But that's the handlebars already. And the seat, I mean, obviously you got to give it up to the king. We're going with a saddleman step up. Yeah, I've got, that's exactly what I have on my FXR. And I've been all over the place on it and it's never done me wrong. That's going to yeah. look really nice and clean. Yeah, and you can't you can't beat Thank it. You. I mean, awesome. a good um, seat that keeps you in the pocket, you know, especially when you want to haul ass. Absolutely, when you can dig in and use that as another push point to really like keep you in a certain position in the saddle, especially when you're trying to jump over from one side to the next, and you got something you can actually lean into, it changes <laughs> everything. Right on. Sliding off the seat is a bad way to go fast. <laughs> Whiskey throttle, isn't that what we called that? So what do you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're like, what happened? I don't know. Um, so, what is coming up next for the bike right now? Look, you got the empty chest. Is the bike coming back from uh, the motor coming back from power code here soon, or what's the word? Uh, actually, Jason and his guys are putting the motor together in Florida. Once we get paint and everything okay. done with this here, we're going to go to Lakeland, and the last part of final assembly will happen there right before we pull into bike week so my oh, job right now at all <laughs> yeah and it, it's crazy like you know even something you know how the stock fxr brake uh, master cylinder was a remote reservoir well i'm trying to make a place where you know i can get a, a more modern cylinder with the reservoir on it so i had to pull out this other transmission that i have and you know, cut off the mount and figure out where it needs to go. Little stuff like that. But I, I feel like that's, those are the things that every guy can do. Every guy can take Absolutely. some metal and move things around <clears throat> and make some small changes. Every girl too. I absolutely agree. Yeah, and, and like you come up with those little ideas when you do the one thing you do the most when you're building anything. That's sit and stare at it. Dude. And that's when you usually start to figure out, oh, well, I could do this little, hmm. Well, I could do that little. If you don't sit and stare at your machine, you're missing out on some stuff you're not doing. I have a rolling office chair, most important tool in the shop. 
and I say this all the time, people probably get tired of me saying <laughs> it, but literally a half an hour every day that I work in the shop, the last half hour is me sitting in that office chair and just looking at the bike. Because your eyes won't lie to you. If you look at something and you go, man, that's just not right, get up right then and cut it off, throw it away, you know, like just change it because your eyes are not lying. The same thing you're right. seeing when you look at that, uh, someone else is going to see too. <clears throat> so let, let's talk about, that's an amazing piece of advice, which leads me to the next piece of advice I want to hear from you is um, I'm dump truck i know enough to put myself in a lot of trouble uh i'm getting ready to build this fxr where do i really start like with the planning process like what can you tell someone at home so if you want to get started there's this if you already have a blog or some materials that exist with that information in it it'd be a good time to plug that too well there's a bunch of stuff i mean we do our best with grease and gears tv with you know shop talk on sundays um uh, torque yeah. on Thursdays, the Cycle Source World Report at CycleSource.com. We put all of our tech articles and fab articles from the magazine on there. But the biggest thing is have somebody that you can ask questions to. You know, what I ran into <clears throat> right off the bat, I'll tell you about working on these older FXRs. A lot of the things that you'll want to do to them that are the new parts for today are not going to be applicable to this bike. So you have to find ways to either find alternatives or find alternative ways to use the parts from the new bikes on older models. Because the industry, I mean, and rightfully so, you know, for the amount of customers and bikes and everything that are out there, they're catering to the new bikes. You know, they don't, there's not as much for these. Sure. Like even, even the wheels. Getting a set of Arlen S Y spoke wheels for this, I had, to, I had to give up on what exact size of wheels I wanted and I had to go with something that would work that they make. Right. But it's good to be able to do that. I've always been really lucky to have a few people that don't mind whenever their phone rings because Dumpy's in trouble. And uh, nine times out of ten, they are into, they're able to walk me through whatever it is. Yeah. That one other time, I just start paying my friends to fix what I broke. <laughs> Well, and you know, man, but usually you can knock it out if you've got a good mentor of sorts. This this is the big thing about it. You you said earlier about not forgetting the part of this that's fun. You know, there's a whole other side of this that I feel like some of the younger people in the industry today and in the, in the community they forget about this part right here. I have more fun out in this shop. One or two of my guys will stop by, or if it's just me and Heather out here for a whole night. This is where part of the fun of all of this comes from. You know, sitting here and having a dream about the perfect motorcycle. That's where you actually start. You start with the dream of the perfect motorcycle. What is your perfect motorcycle? You romantic dog, you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, that is though, there's romance in that process. I mean, that's exactly what it is. You're sitting here going, you're dreaming. It's like, you, you've got two kitchens in your house when you have a good garage. Everyone wants to hang out in either room or both because you're yep. cooking something good that's going to feed your future. And I'm really excited to see this FXR build come together. Uh, I think it's going to be really cool and a little stressful the way it's going to come together at the end, <laughs> which will make ah. for really good TV. Um, so you guys getting that bike down there pretty much fully customized, You know, slam the motor, do the plumbing, do the wiring. Yep and go show it off and eventually it's going to be given away at Iron Horse Saloon at Sturgis. Yeah. Um, you don't have to be present to win, y'all. So make sure you go to the website. I believe it is DennisKirk.com forward slash garage build. You'll see the contest there. Enter to win this motorcycle. Keep following Cycle Source on all the platforms. Same thing with Dennis Kirk. Same thing with Dump Truck. If you type in Dump Truck as one word, I'll pop up all over the place. It might get weird. It's almost guaranteed. It will hey. be fun, though. Um, and listen, so yeah, make don't sure you're part of the program. And another thing about the garage build program is everyone that's out there who is building at home, you can submit some of your photos and videos of the build that's happening right there through that same website, DennisKirk.com forward slash garage build. And if Dennis Kirk digs what you're doing, they might throw it up on the interwebs. And if Cycle Source digs what you're doing, you know, they might do the same and maybe even the features is, is what I'm hearing. So check it out. It's not just for winning. It's also for showcasing your own work, and you got a whole community of people you can ask for help on when you do stuff like that. You know, Chris? Yeah. You know, I wanted to say, man, 
I, I appreciate you signing on to this and helping us get the word out because that community that you're talking about, those are our people. You know, when popularity Absolutely. wanes and the trends go away, those are the guys that live, eat, and breathe garage culture. You know, so that's why we're involved with this. You helping us get that message out to more people means a lot to me. I appreciate it. Oh, man, to be able to put our names next to each other makes my chest stick out so much. I appreciate y'all. Y'all y'all, and, and others like you are a big reason why, you know, things don't get forgotten. They're a big reason why uh, people can actually go in their garage and build their dream like we were talking about earlier. So you keep doing what you're doing, and I'll be your megaphone, baby. <laughs> How are you doing? Thank you, man. Hey, and uh, tell everybody, yeah, too, we're going to be we're taking this thing to Daytona Bike Week, straight from there to the Donnie Smith Show, straight from there to Texas Fandango, and straight from there to Arizona Bike Week. Woo. So it's it's on tour. That's awesome. So y'all going to be throwing that in the trailer and hitting the road? Yep. Well, I guess we should probably hang out then. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, cool. So when do you expect your next update on the uh, bike field to be coming up so people know when to log in next time? Well, we have uh, regular updates hitting the internet and social media, but let's, uh, cool. why don't you and me have a garage visit again in like a week? I love that story. More hanging out with you doesn't make me cry in public or anything, so I'm down. Yeah. All right, man. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by right, today. Buddy. Don't try. catching up with you. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you for showing everybody the build. I'm excited to keep catching up. Yes, sir. I'm excited to see how it goes. <laughs> he should be. <laughs>